and uh, do a bit of camera effect. Remember Rav Nachman when he says Shalom Shlomo B'Shlaim, he says, you know, ask for the peace of Shem. Says not only the people, every strong. Okay, folks, concentrate. The Shevet Yosef come to Moshe and they say, if the daughters of Tzlochot <coughs> marry somebody out of their tribe, and they say, because God gave us the land of Yehagorah, the Sulat, and every tribe got their special place, and if they will marry someone from another tribe, then it will become part of another tribe. So the Ishbut asked the deepest question of the world. Okay, the Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, you're right. This generation, they can only marry someone from the same tribe. And the deepest question of the world is, and this is the last thing in the Torah. This is the last thing in the fourth book of Moses. Isn't that against everything we're learning? Here, the beginning of Yiddishkeit is that Romovino teaches us how to give everything away, right? Wouldn't be the most beautiful thing in the world that the last part of the Torah. And Yosef came and they said, Oh, he will not suffer. Marry someone from Shimon, from Lev, from the other tribes, would be so happy to give them a little piece of our land. Would be beautiful, right? So why isn't it beautiful? Because the individual says, and why did they have to say they got it out of the But you know, sometimes when someone gives you something with so much heart and so much soul, when something is given to you from highest heaven, you can't give it. If I buy an apple, I can give it away. I take out a million dollars from the bank, I can give it away. When someone who loves me so much gives me the smallest thing in the world, this is so deep, this is so holy. Me, I just want to share with you. Here we're beginning Vishnu Tarnav, the fifth book of Moses. Moshe Rabbeinu goes over the whole Torah again. And I, I'll take a few times and we should put it together like. I want you to know something very, very dear to me that I told you how If someone who I don't love so much or who doesn't love me that much, walks up to me and says, hey, could you do me a favor? And I said, right now I don't have time. I can't. How much should I help them? Not so much. They're not that close. So they asked me, I said, no. If someone who's the closest in the world to me asks me the smallest favor in the world, and I say no, you know what I did? Where did I touch? Or was not this one favor? But after I love you so much, and you can say no to me, Mama, she destroyed the deepest step. That's why not that close. Because if you would love me as much as I love you, you couldn't say no to me. You couldn't. You know, if Dari would say to me, can you please tie my shoe? I would say, I'm busy now. 
<laughs> you know what I'm doing? It's not that I'm not tying the shoe. Suddenly, I stopped being her father for that moment. Because if I would really be her father, and she can't tie a shoe, how can I not tie a shoe? What, what, what are parents for? What is my greatest privilege in the world? You know what's so special? Because she cannot ask anybody to tie a shoe. I cannot walk up to any person and strange and tie my shoes. I can ask them for a favor, but not tie my shoes. You can only ask someone who's very, 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 very close. Okay, now listen to me. So I just want you to think about it. But now, the other side. Imagine I do tie her shoe. You know what this is? It's not a private little function. It's reaching the deepest, deepest depths, right? It's reaching into the deepest depths when God called out in heaven that I should marry my wife. And everybody knows, when God calls out this person by this person, everybody knows that the bascal are the voice of the children, right? The bascal means the, the heavenly voice calls out, Moshe should marry Hannah, right? So who is that voice? It's the voice of the children. So imagine if I refuse to tie a shoe, I'm reaching, I'm destroying that bascal, right? I'm touching that heavenly voice, which called out that I should be a father. It's a small thing. And here, friends, I want you to open your heart in the deepest, most awesome way. Remember, we're learning it every year. We learn it in different ways. Why is it on Yom Kippur God forgives us, hopefully? But we're not sitting there waiting for Mashiach to come. Yeah, we're waiting, but Yom Kippur is not more special for Mashiach to come than any other day. We're not waiting for the Messiah on Yom Kippur more than any other day. On Tisha B'Av, when we cry over the destruction of the Temple, it's clear to us he has to come. And even if it doesn't mama show up, Something happens inside. Apples, something. It's the ray of the coming of Mashiach. So I want you to know something. On Yom Kippur, I'm standing before God. I'm saying, Master of the world, I'm so sorry. I ate a hamburger on Yom Kippur. Please forgive me. I'll try not to do it next time. I said, Master of the world, I'm so sorry. On um, Shabbos, December 24th, I was invited to the Christmas party and I forgot it's Shabbos. And I went, you know, forgive me, I hope you understand. God says, I understand that. I forgive you. But now listen to me. Oh, let's say on Shabbos, August 7th, it was very hot and I forgot it's Shabbos, I went to the beach. And only after he came from the water, suddenly so realized it's Shabbos. So I got dressed fast, I went to Shul, I was very really angry. <laughs> so I got the understanding. God says, okay, Sean, that makes <laughs> I'll forgive you, right? Don't talk to me about it next week. I once said to my Yidin in New York, you know, I said, can you please come this year and keep her? And Tell God some different sins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God must be promised that He knows whether you eat your hamburgers, you can go to the beach and shower with you. He must be brought to you know, really, how much can He take, right? He's ready to forgive you, but please don't tell me the same thing. Like I put something new, right? Be a little bit imaginative. You know? Be creative, you know, creative sinning. You know? <laughs> but that's the same thing. Okay, but on Yom Kippur, whatever it is, whatever it is, 
I said, what is the master of the world? I'm sorry I did it, I won't do it anymore. And here, I want you to know something very, very deep. We learned it a thousand times. Let me ask you, we're driven out from the Holy Land because we didn't love each other. Isn't it crazy? Let me ask you, for not loving the whole world, I deserve so much pain. For not loving, I deserve that much pain to do that from the land. You know what you went through in 2000 years? It doesn't make sense. So remember we're learning it, but this year we're going to learn it in a different way. When I love somebody very much, and they hurt my feelings, there is two ways to react to it. I can say, listen, I love you so much, I forgive you. And then another way. I love you so much. If you can do this, I don't ever want to see you again. I don't ever want to see you again. What you did is very little. You know, Tisha B'Av, when I'm standing at the table, those of you that show I may not have done anything real wrong, but whatever I did, whatever I did, if I can do this to the Rabbanisha, Rabbanisha says, I have nothing to do with you. You know what it's clear to me on Tisha B'Av? On Tisha B'Av it's clear to me where I touch my little. And here I want you to open your hands the deepest, deepest, deepest depths. Imagine I love this girl very much. Hurt her feelings. So I meet her and I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Okay, I forgive you. That wasn't so But imagine I love this girl very much. And I heard her feelings. And then I meet her. I'm not asking her for forgiveness. I'm just so broken. I could have a feeling. Don't say anything. I'm just sitting on the floor crying, how could I do such a thing? How could I do such a thing? And you know what happens after? Not that she forgives me. But she is. On Tisha of God doesn't forgive us. So much. Because on Tisha of it's clear to me. When I do something wrong, where it touches me. Where it touches me. And you know, all year long I thought if I live in the Bronx instead of an Elsie's Hall, okay, so I don't have my, my address is something wrong, right? The mailman has to go instead of uh, my street near Shrine and go to 125th Street. And Tishaba, when it comes to me in Tishaba, just me so deep. What am I doing? Wow, 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 what am I doing? And here I want you to open the heart of the people's spirit. Yom Kippur, I'm still into the tree of knowledge. It's not the utmost fixing. On Tisha, on Yom Kippur, I stand before God and I say, I did good things, I did a mitzvah, and I did something wrong. I'm still dealing with good and bad. On Tisha B'Av, it says that it was good or bad. Who cares that it was good or bad? It's so much deeper than that. Imagine I walk up to the girl, I love them all, and say, listen, you know, I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings because I just read in the book here. You're not supposed to hurt the feeling of a person you love. 
And it's on page 35. I have to make sure it's true, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it says here, yeah. Do not permit you to hurt somebody's feelings, especially if they love you. And I remember, I did hurt your feelings. And uh, what says here? Yeah, it says you have to do sugar. Okay. I'm reading it to her, right? I want you know, on Tisha, on Moshon, you keep us there, but so also because of Lamar, right? I say, Rabbi Shem, and your Torah says, you're not going to be able to do this. And then your Torah says, with Shabbat Shem, you have to do Tshuva. It's very high, right? But you know why I'm not learning Torah on, on, on Tisha Bat? I'm not learning Torah. I'm telling you guys, you know why I'm so broken, not because the Torah says. Not because it's good or bad. It's not even because you said so. Because how could I? I want you to know something. This is the absolute deepest thing. The woman says, Moi shimmy be absolute. I want you, Mamish, to open your hearts. It's the deepest depth. Moshe says, he's giving over the Torah, and I want you to know, I want you to keep the Torah. Not because it's forbidden. Maybe absolutely, how can I do it? I must keep on doing it because I always forget. Listen to me. I must thank you so much. You're not much tough. You know, everybody knows that the four books of Moses, it says, Moshe Rabbeinu, God was speaking out of him. The fifth book of Moses, which we are beginning to read now, it says, Moshe with Pa'asma Amor, he said it all by himself. So all the Holy Rabbi is asking, Moshe Rabbeinu is talking, doing things by himself. Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't move his hand on the start out, right? What does it mean he's doing it by himself? So what, what I'm telling you now is, the four books of Moshe, Moshe went and said, you have to keep Shabbos, because if you has to show them, if you don't keep the Shabbos, it's a grave sin. If you're not permitted, it's bad. And it's holy bad, I'm not talking unholy bad. And holy bad on the highest level, right? The problem is when you atzma amma. Moshe Rabbeinus says to you, don't want you to look at me. Mamash went to Atzma from the deepest depths I can. How can you not keep Shabbos? How can you not sit in the circle? How can you not be drunk and fool? How, how can you not eat matzah and pesah? I'm eating matzah and pesah because of God, because I, I, I eat bread. It's a very, very great sin. Yeah, it is. It's deeper than that. This is Tavon, this is Tishwa. Can we come in, please? So, please. Thank you so much. Okay, now listen to me. On Yom Kippur is not the utmost fixing on Yom Kippur is not the utmost fixing of the world. And here I want you, Mamish, to open your heart, and this is awesome. God created the world in ten sayings, right? Which saying of God was most destroyed? You know which saying? I want you to this a title from the Mer Shalaya, which is mind blown. God says, let there be light, there is light. God says, let there be grass, there is grass. God says, let there be fishes, there is fishes. God says, let us create a human being in my image. The vow to be destroyed. The vow to be destroyed. And I want you to know something, I didn't see anybody saying it. Maybe they do, I didn't see it yet. I want to say the Baal Torah. The Tisha Baal basically is a man from the ten. Everybody knows God created the world. 
those ten sayings, right? Now listen to this. This is a deep step. I want you to know one more thing. There's an other, other saying of God which was also destroyed. The Gemara says, Bereish is Nama Manu. The beginning is also a word of God. Listen to this deepest, deepest step. This, this kind of connection to God that how could I write? This doesn't come from my head. <coughs> this is precious for the deepest, 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 deepest. It's like, like in between creation and before creation. You know, when you meet somebody you love, when do you, when do you love them? 100 years later. It's voracious, right? First second, right? First second. Okay, it might develop later, right? After that, you hear oil, right? You know who that person is. Then touch your stasha begins to grow, right? And then finally, you stand under the chup, and the version says, poo, 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 a little Pnoim, right? It seems. So we're saying the Torah that Pnoim is voracious, right? The deepest depths, right? Your friends give me a lot of energy because I want to see the whole term. And I want you to know the deepest, deepest master of the mess. Mamish, when it's clear to me. When it's clear to me, there is no way. Friends, do I do not walk on all four because Emily Post says it is really not nice to walk on all four? Do I not walk on all four because in Kitter Shranoch, the Mamish says so in the morning. Mamish says so in the morning. Mamish says, first of all, wake up like a lion. And then it's clear from the Kitter Shranoch that you have to walk on two and up and four. Even in the English translation, it's very, very clear. <laughs> That's why I walk on two. I need a psychiatrist in the worst way. Right? Yes. I don't even know if there's anybody who can kill me, right? Especially after I'm an expert on the Shulkan you know? <laughs> like, this one person wrote a letter to the bookstore where he bought the Shonor in English, and he wrote him a letter, please convey my regards to Rabbi Carroll. What a beautiful guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so from Yosef Karim, you know, just, so it's one of the young members in Israel who composed that book, he said, thank you. It's not where it's at. Right? <coughs> and here, I just want you to open your heart and do this, do this, do this, do this. You know, we were always learning that the highest, this is not like the Ramam said, a little bit, but it's a Torah from Meshulaya, which is awesome. We are always learning that the highest level of God is that he has choice. Is there anybody a freer agent than God? Right? God has choice. God is a free agent. Right? So the way we are always learning what does it mean God created man in his image? We are the only ones who have choice. The cat has no choice. It's a cat. An orange is an orange. A dog is a dog. I have choice. I can be Yaakov Avinu, I can be Esau. I can be holy, I can be unholy. I can be good, I can be bad. I have choice, right? Now listen to this. We were learning a lot of times where we just go over to What is the highest level? The highest level is that it's so deep that I don't have choice. You know, friends, if I have choice to hit my children and then 
I don't hit them because it says in Kitzel Shanoch, I shouldn't hit my children. And the laws. But they want you to know, I walk on the street, hey, come in, brother. Enough space here. The two great rabbis, brother. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. If you don't hit them because it's written that you should, it's still better than if you do it. I know. Harry Kafka, you always say the white toilets. You have Lamet's Chos on all those people. Okay, this is a good time for you. <laughs> you you leave Lamet's Chos on them. It's okay. Listen, friends, can you give me just one ounce more energy? You learned it a thousand times. Let me ask you, every Friday night, I get my wife and my children together because I just learned that the highest thing is food choice, right? <coughs> so about five o'clock like Friday, I want us to choose which is food choice. <laughs> and the majority decides. And let's say it's my wife, me, and we have five children. How much is that? Seven. Okay. Four say, let's keep the shovels, and three say, don't majority decides. And everything I call into the toilet, but the majority decides. And imagine if sometimes three say, do keep and four say, don't. I have to listen to the toilet. The toilet says the majority decides. We don't. It's very, very beautiful. Our relationship has improved since that time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just, just so beautiful, please tears to my eyes. <laughs> You think I'm joking? There are people who do that. I just met a family. They tell me that whenever comes a Jewish holiday, they want to choose. And they feel it's more beautiful than children choose. Bochen way, right? You mean you have choice? Let me ask them, do you have choice come every night? You have choice to go to shul. Or you have choice to go to beautiful movie. And even if you go, right, you choose to go. What kind of a joy? What kind of a joy? Let me ask you something. If you see a poor man dying on the street, and you have a choice to pass by a poor man, you are only stopped, you have hundreds of dollars in your pocket. You have a choice to pass them by. And you choose to give it. Don't matter. Means you could choose not to give, right? What kind of thing? What this is God's image? So I want you to know this is one of the most mind-blowing titles I learned in Besyaki. It's a title on Besyaki from Pesach. I pointed it out to a few people and just blew their mind. Because it's Mamash, a gate opening time. The Besiakov says, being a slave means to do everything by choice. A slave is somebody who does everything. I serve God by choice. I have choice. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim means God takes me out of the level of choice. Suddenly you don't have choice anymore. You know what this is? means God lifts me up so high and it's not below choice. It's beyond choice. I want you to know something, the deepest, deepest, it's awesome guys. I want you to know if I could say such words, God had choice to give us a toilet. You know why God had choice? Because he asked us. God had choice. He asked us, do you want to? We say yes. That means God says, if you don't want to, I won't. But I want you to know something else. The Russian listens to every prayer and not by choice. How can God not listen in somebody's life? God has choice. It's the deep steps.
تو بگه هایی دو اینو بگه هایی دو اینو بگه هایی دو اینو بگه هایی دو اینو This is Ishbut say in its deepest part. Then some of you only have to tell me. There's Hasina and there's Yerushalayim. Mount Sinai is chosen. Yerushalayim and the Kodesh. Where God listens to every prayer. Is there Shara Shemoni? This is Mamish. Human is speaking. God is here. God has choice, but no, he doesn't have choice. Me, I want you to open, want you to open your heart in the deepest way. And listen to how deep this is. You know why we're driven out from your shrine? Do you know what it is to be in exile? Because we do everything we choice again. It's the whole thing. And listen to this. When God gave the land to Romovino, he didn't ask him. Why didn't he ask him? Because Erz Israel, you shine, it's not the land. It's deeper than child. And here I want you to know something. This is awesome, the deeper steps. I want you to know something. That I have something which is very precious to me. And I love somebody very much. So I have choice to give it to them. Just imagine I have something very beautiful. I'd like to give it to the shaman and to die. But I have choice not to give it to him. Then I want you to know something. If something is small, 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 precious to me, I don't have choice. I have to give it to him. Whom should I give it? Because it's so precious to me. It is so precious. I have to give it to you. How could I not? I want you to know God giving Erz is Rot and Romovino was not choice. The worship says, I have something so precious. I have something so precious. I have to give it to you. I want you to know the deepest depths. There's two levels of Shabbos. There is a level of Shabbos that, like every mitzvah of the Torah, I have choice. Then there's a level of Shabbos which God gave us a gift. And God says, Lech dear. It's not choice. God says, I have the most precious thing. Who should I give it to And this is the bliss of Shabbos. I mean, Shabbos, when it's clear to me that God gave me the most precious thing in the world. And here I want you now, let's go back. You know why we didn't, why we never made it back to Eretz Yisrael 100%? The Maraglim said they don't like Eretz Yisrael. I want you to know something. If I buy a dress for the Shaman, right? Imagine I'm coming back from Vienna and they bring the Shaman and die a dress. And the Shaman dies and says, you know, we don't like so much the dress. Will I never forgive them? They have a right of choice. So we don't like it. But imagine if the most, most, most precious thing I have. And I want to give it to my children. And they said, we don't like it. They hurt me for That I can't forget. That I can't forget. It's too deep. It's too deep. It's too deep. It is so deep. And I just want to share with you one more thing. That the matter says, when God says to Moshe, redeem the Jewish people, God was, Moshe was arguing with God for one week. And he said, Shlach no Tishlach, send for somebody else. And I'll make it very fast. You know, there's one message which is awesome, that Moshe Rabbeinu says, 
Why did you send Pinchas? I give up. There's a medrash. The medrash. One medrash says, God says, Moshe said, send Aaron, send Mashiach. There's one medrash that says that Moshe says to God, send Pinchas. I want you to know the last three parshas are Pinchas, right? What is Pinchas? What's Kanoim Pagan by? Kanoim Pagan by means, if you have choice, so don't do it, right? That's, that's something which is not so much concentration. Thank you. It will be too far reaching. Right? Canoin Pike Boy means if if you have choice, don't do it. If you have no choice. So you see suddenly in the last the last three portions of the toilet shifting of the choice. Just want to say one more thing, friends. Something which I say to myself all the time. You know, some of you remember, I remember a lot of times. Until the Second World War, we Jews had always choice. They would take us, and they would say, you convert, you let you go. If you don't convert, you'll be killed. The Second World War, for the first time, we had no choice. They take a Jew to guest from us. You say, I don't want to be a Jew. Who cares? My great grandmother was Jewish. I'm not even Jewish anymore. Do you have any connection to Jews? Okay. And everybody knows the six million opened the gates for the Holy Land. They opened the gates, Mamish, with their Shao Shimon. And I want you to know something awesome deep. I want you to know the whole Shuva movement today. The people coming back to Yiddish Christ, you think they're coming back by choice? It looks like it. <laughs> it isn't. Mamish, God takes you by your ears. God takes you by your ears. Which other did I want to? Did actually that? I don't want to. Which one do you want to? I was happy. <laughs> in fact, the last time I saw the guy just he felt I'm really in good shape. So he crazy. He meets me weeks after that. My tips were hanging out. <laughs> You're back where you came from, right? <coughs> Friend, I want to share one more thing. Awesome with you. And I'm saying this in other, in other of my children, and I really want to bless you both, all of us. Do you think when someone converts today, it's by choice? Outside looks by choice. It's not by choice. I want you to know when God took me to Mount Sinai, He asked me, Do you want to or not? Why is it? Why is it when God, how did I become a Jew? And Mount Sinai, by choice. How did Abraham become a Jew? By choice. You know how it kind of becomes a Jew? <coughs> in the Mikveh. You know what's in the Mikveh is? I want you to know the deepest depths. And you're under the water, you have no choice. This is one place where God washes off all my choices. Under the water is the choice. Because all my mistakes are only on the choice level. Won't you know the deepest, deepest steps? Why is the high priest, before he walked into the Holy of Holies, why was he going to make these? He's asking forgiveness. They do not say a bunch. Forgiveness. Why is he the only one who goes to the Mikvah? The Mik because only the kind God of she was on the level of clear to him. It was clear to him. That in the deepest, deepest, deepest depths, he never choose anything wrong. If I would only have sex. You really want to do wrong. You really ever choose anything bad. Go live you do a little mission. It's clear before God if I would have known what I'm doing.
was not by choice, just by mistake. And the Imamish goes under the water. And here, I want to share one more deep perspective. You got to go already. Thank you. Thank you. You also have service solutions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might become one of them too, you know. So I may have Thank you. Okay, give me just two more minutes, whatever. So to speak, I can do the point. See what I want to tell you, is, friends. Where obviously it's clear to you. When did God open the gates of Chuba to the world? When did God open the gates for thousands, thousands of people to come back to Yiddishkeit? From the moment He got the Holy War back, back to life. <coughs> I mean, this is historic fact. Mamish, from the moment He came back to Yiddishkeit, something happened to the world. Something happens to the world. You know, everybody writes Torah as a true woman, and I haven't seen that anybody saying in the most simple words is the Holy War. See, that's what it is, right? The Holy War, the biggest light tower in the world, right? It's, it's not Rabbi Fritz Cohen in San Francisco, it's not Brother Me, it's not Brother You, it's not Brother Anybody. Mamish. To the bunch of on psychedelic life. <laughs> okay, now. Do you want to share something very deep with you? The level of non choice, you don't have it every minute. You don't have it every minute. You know, I can love somebody very, very much beyond choice. But it's not always. It's only at great moments. Only at great moments. General, my life is based on choice. When do I feel, Mamish, that I have no choice? Mamish, I'm standing in Darwin and singing the Hun Ran Hashem. It's clear to me I have no choice. Sad enough, I walk on the street. Someone starts to talk to me, a little bit of Russian horror. And I think it was really unbelievable. I never knew such a queen. What happened to my whole time of non choice? Forget it. It's forgotten. Right? I want you to know something. I want you to know, friends, the deepest depths. I want to bless Michelle, I want to bless Ariel, I want to bless you. Whenever by choice, it becomes hard to you. But God should give you a little way of life of my choice. Whenever suddenly you think, you know, let's face it, why don't you charge me? It's so hard. I'll bless you at that moment. Shabbos should shine to you. Little Shabbos, young Shakur Shabbos. Moshe Rabbeinu Shabbos, right? Yismach Moshe, the madness of the gift, the gift of non is the deepest gift in the world. I want you to know, you know, Pinchas, it's the Heshi Vlebovus of Bonim, what's he doing there? You know, Pinchas comes to Paris, Suddenly it's clear to them, I have no choice about it, my children. And then suddenly he goes to the children and they realize, why am I so angry with my parents? I have no choice in my What am I fooling about? Because at that moment when it's clear to you that you're connected by the young child, then you just, it's not even a matter of forgiving, right? You see, Pinchas doesn't go into the Holy of Holies to ask for forgiveness. I'm not Pinchas. 
Pinchas is deeper than forgiving. Pinchas is deeper than forgiving. So I want you to know, friends, everybody knows Tisha B'Av is a little bit Mashiach and a little bit Pinchas. Pinchas says that Mamish is so deep in my heart. How can I live aside? How can I live aside? You know, friends, if someone says to me, Yiddishkeit fulfills all my needs, but an outsider. Someone says, I like Israel because it's a beautiful country and it's just very, very beautiful. Yeah, sweet. I'm not sure. Could be the lowest, could be the worst. I don't know. I'm sure it's the best, right? But this is not the point. Here, I want you to know one more unbelievable thing. Why is it when people really love each other, they always look at each other's eyes? What's so special about the universe? I want to say the deepest Tyra. That if I have love you beyond choice, I can stop looking at you. I wish I could stop looking at you. I can't. Just I love you so much, right? I have no choice. You see, our downfall was the spies went to Israel, they looked at the land and they said, we don't like it. And here I want you to know one more thing. When I lose something which I got by choice, I'm sad and I'm crying. When I lose something which I don't, which I love beyond choice, I can't stop crying. Or for sit in the life. Clear the darkness. God says, you admonish that night was a great work of forever. The greatest fixing is, the greatest fixing is Tisha B'Av. I'm sorry, I can't stop crying. Because on, on, on the choice level, it's stupid. It's 2,000 years after. What do you expect to say now, right? On the choice level, it is crazy. On the level of free of knowledge, so you really think because you're sitting here on the floor, it will, it will have anything to do with the politics that Israel should be more peaceful, less peaceful, be given to you or not given to you? That's crazy, right? Yeah, you're right, but I have no choice. I'm crying. I'm crying. And here I just want to say one more thing. Sadly now, that I meet my soulmate of blessed everyone to find their soulmates. We're living in a world where everybody thinks we have choice, right? Choice. You have to find out who it is, when it is, to love each other. And, uh, you know, today, first you go out for 10 years, then you get close for 10 years, then you see a marriage council for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then you realize, let's not rush, right? <laughs> Take it slow, right? Let's not overdo it. Okay. Won't you know how Misha was the bar? Mamish, when the Benoit is called the girls go out dancing, and one the person sees his soulmate, and the girl is her soulmate. <coughs> the one you don't know is clear to you. Do you know the story by Shaw? She went to, to tell him Shaw was so shy. Shaw was not for the he didn't have enough guts to go to his song, so she would have to him. Remember yeah. that by Shola Melech, his wife went up to him on coming shows of ours. Yeah. She went up to him. Now listen to this. If I have no choice, what am I fooling him out? Like it made so mad. What's there to talk about? And here I just want to tell you one more thing. I was always thinking so much, why is it 
that when, when Avram was looking for a wife for Yitzchak, I think you remember I told it a lot, a lot of times, he said to Leza, look around if it fits, right? I want, I want you to find a girl which fits. And he made himself a sign, the girl who will answer me, I'll also give water to your camels. That's the one. How come when Yaakov met Rachel, he didn't, he didn't test her? <laughs> he just said to her, what would you do? I have to tell you a joke, it's all joke, just because it's so serious, I want to loosen up. You know, this boy has a date for the first time, like some of us never spoke to a girl, and he goes and he says, what am I supposed to talk about? So they tell him, you have to talk about three things, <coughs> about love, <coughs> about family, and about philosophy. <coughs> okay, he meets with girl Spritzel. First question is love. Do you love Blinzel? <laughs> <laughs> she says, I hate it. <laughs> oh, beautiful conversation. Right? Now comes family. Does your sister love Blinzel? <laughs> <laughs> she says, I don't have a sister. <laughs> Ah, here comes philosophy. <laughs> if he would have had a sister, <laughs> would she would she like this? Anyway, <laughs> listen to me. What was I saying? Oh. Why didn't Yaakov? Why didn't Yaakov? And here I want you just to share with you this is it. The first place I make this is Abraham. The second is the Mikdash the third is the Mikdash is the Yaakov. I want you to open your hearts to it. This is a Torah from the Shiloya, from the Yaakov, so you show him. It's like one of the foundation of the Torah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Imagine I become the Pope in Rome, right? Possible. I call it Rav Moshe Feinstein. I would say he is the Pope. I was born Jewish, and I want you to know, I dove in Minchas was for Shkodesh, and I forgot he had a What am I supposed to do? <laughs> He'll answer me back. You have to dive in the second one. <laughs> I say, but I told you, I, 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 I'm the Pope. This is so that. I call him up and I say, listen, I'm the Pope, am I supposed to put him up in the dumpster? He says, how could you not, right? One has nothing to do with it. This is what the Ishbut says. And also he says one more thing. Why is it that Abraham, the Abraham and Isaac, Abraham Yitzhak, God spoke when they were away. The Yaakov God spoke when they were asleep. He says, if I'm a Jew by choice, and God talks to me while I'm away. Yaakov suddenly is coming up and Yaakov is so good. Not by choice anymore. Yaakov is the first Jew. The Hina Hashem needs a fall. Mamish God says to me, I want you to know that from now on, the holiness is so deep, it's not your choice, not consciously. Inside of the inside of the inside. So I want you to know I didn't see it on this phone, but I want to say a Gewalt Torah. Only Yaakov was called out his soulmate. But Yitzchak and Avon were not called out yet, they had choice. From Yaakov on, suddenly it's the inside. The unshowing. So if I meet my soulmate, so what am I testing? Nothing to test. Yaakov meets his soulmate, no one can do something very deep. Why did Yaakov need the dream first before he meets Rachel? He could have had the dream after. Ah, because if he would have had the dream before, he would have tested her. I'm sure she would have passed the test. But it was there. The holiness of Yaakov and Rachel is, now listen to this, his real, real soulmate Leia is even deeper than Amshar's, right? We're just giving to him. Everybody knows that Rochel is a soulmate in Chutzlor, outside Israel, and Leh is a soulmate in Erzisrael. Because the Holy Land is 
deeper, deeper, deeper than Charles. Deeper than Charles. Okay, friends, I want to bless you in the that God should lift up our choice level, right? God should give us enough guts to choose the right thing. But all those things which are really deeper than choice. You see, if on all those things which are deeper than choice, we think we have choice because we are in exile. Right? This is what exile is all about. That I take things which I have no choice, and I think I have choice. And I'm doing it on the level of choice. When the real, real truth is that I have no choice. Deeper than anything in the world. And I just want you to know, why is it when I make a vow? Because the vow is lifting me up to the world of no choice. When I make a vow, I don't have choice anymore. Mom is the deep respect. And everybody know, knows that there's the Mikdash, the holy temple of Yaakov, is the Vayide Yaakov Neder Lema. Yaakov Neder Neder. The third day, oh, I'm just going to share with you. Anything which I build by choice takes a long time. Everybody knows the third day is the Mikdash will come down from heaven. You know why? If I have no choice, it's already built. It's already there. Anything which I have no choice, it's much all God's doing. <coughs> okay, friends, we should open our eyes one day and see that there's a mixture there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That everybody's there. Mm-hmm. And also I want to bless and I want to bless Michelle and, and Ariella. I bless you whenever you meet your soulmate, the one who have no choice. A blessing God should make it clear to you that you have no choice. Because if it's clear to you, then it doesn't take any time. Then the Holy Temple is still in one second, one night. You know, Ruth and Boaz, the ones who really go to this and listen to this. Boaz comes to the field and he sees Ruth. And I want to tell you something, really, I want you to pay attention one second. Can you imagine, just imagine the Heilige Bachshemte, imagine Satma Rebbe walks down to the holy wall and then he says, you know, I saw on the women's side a girl. Can you tell me who she is? <laughs> what would you think? <laughs> just love you a little bit, go away, right? You know that Boaz was the rabbi, right? The rabbi of all rabbis, the deal of the church, right? Boaz goes into the field, it's all the same. And there suddenly he sees a girl collecting a naked chip of hair. The three of them look at each other. Remember the story of Ruth? She just converted, she found and she went, she was poor, she went to the field of Boaz to collect, but, you know, whatever falls off when you, when you, how do you say, on, Harvest the field belongs to the poor. So Boaz comes to the field and he says, Who is this girl? And the Gemara says, Why did he ask for her? Because he saw the Shrina upon her. He saw God's light upon her. Imagine he would have said, Does not recognize it? <laughs> Mishael would have never found him. Why did he ask? He had no choice. Right? And I want you to know one more deep, 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 deep thing. That Yehuda met Toma, right? He walked after her. After, after he did it, listen to the message. After he did it, you have to realize Yehuda, the Meir Shalai said, I'm sure you know it said, Yehuda had never one evil thought in his whole life, right? Yehuda, I mean, all the children of Yad. Oh, man. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for staying so long. I know it was hard on you. Thank you so much. Invite, me, invite us to your children's wedding. Is that a deal?
Invite us to your children's wedding. What? So tell me you have to go? But joy is over. Okay, well, I'm finishing in two minutes. Promise. Try to. <laughs> You have no choice, no. I have no choice. Tell me if you just finished, I want to say. What was I saying? You heard me, I never said it. I'm just the matters. You heard it after he did it with Stumer. Just imagine, you heard the Holy of Holies, walks out of the street, and there he sees a prostitute, and he walks up to her. It's crazy, right? After it's over, the mother says, Mama, she would have looked up to heaven. He says, Rabbi Nishra, the master of the world, did you do that? Did you do that? So you heard a voice from heaven? It says, Me many yachts to the bone push. That's his idea. It's not good. It was not a good job. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that there is something everybody has. Everybody is given, which God did not give to anyone else. And it's so easy to sell. It's so easy to give it away. It's so easy to give it away. It is so easy. So the Heilige study shows us. How much I want to bless you when you start to go to taste. You know what those rabbis do to us, you know? Love, uh, open all the things. I mean, we know so little, but the little we learn from them. He says, every Torah, the four books of Moses, it says, for Yedabah, Moshe, Yisrael. Moshe talks to Yisrael. In the world, it's Elish, Kiva, Moshe, El, Kor, Yisrael. What they do all of Israel, what sure talks to all of Israel. Moshe went on send the invitation. Moshe went and talks, everybody says. They all. So he says the deepest ones. When Moshe Rabbeinu talks, in whatever he has to say, is the same for everyone. Then he says to Israel. And Moshe Rabbeinu really talks to everyone separately. Although it sounds like he talks to all of us. But his mom is talking to everyone around, then it says, I will call you so. to everyone. He says, Mamish, Moshe will be at my honor. Moshe Rabbeinu says, I want to give you over how precious it is what God gave me. And I want you to have strength. I want to give you all of what's just for you. How much just for you? I want you to know, friends, if I manage to get to that which is just for me, I have no trouble connecting to that which is just for you. And you have no problem on the show. What's the problem of it? What happened? I If it was a shame, you said, just came upon me. Okay, as long as <laughs> you're happy. Uncontrollable. Well, as long as you're happy, I'm happy with you. Tell me if we just finish. I said at the Shabbos already, that's a Torah yeah. Ele. Is Rosh Tevis a black Rosh Hashanah? Moshe Rabbeinu, the whole fixing is of the bottom is the Torah which gets you out of 
12 minutes. And again, let me just connect with the beginning of the beginning. Just give me your attention one more second. If my whole connection to the Torah is, this is right, this is wrong. And when I heard somebody's feelings, I found the Kiddush page 35, he not permitted to hurt people's feelings. Then I cannot stop talking bad things about other people. If I'm connected to the Torah, I'm the Then not only I cannot say bad things, I cannot even hint. You know, a lot of people don't say bad, bad things about you, right? You'd ask me, what do you think of my shulam? You know what I said? I'm not permitted to talk Rosh Hashanah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't say anything, right? And you will say, <laughs> I said everything, right? <laughs> you know, a lot of times, a lot of times, I ask, I overhear people, one boy that say, takes off Schwinzel for a day, then he said, next day to Yankele, I, I, I know you have been going with her before, what do you think of Schwinzel? And he says, I'm not permitted to say bad things. So, how much bad did you say? Everything, right? You can knock up a person by not saying anything bad. This is about Rosh I didn't say anything. Give out what I say. Give out what I say. Or I asked you, hey, what do you think of Schwinzel? I said, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> and I go home and I think about the mind so I get so much to say and I control myself right? so Elia Dwan Moshe Rabbeinu is giving us over the toilet to cleanse us from our Krishna even though I don't see anything bad right? what did I say? This is Niki Atzman I want you to know something. Imagine we would have spiritual eyes. I would see the lowest people in the world that God had a secret with that person. And I have one ounce of love for God. Can I make fun of the person God has a secret with? How could I? And if I can, I'm an outsider. Bum 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 b